What's going on, believers? Happy Saturday. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. So I have a live recording from Thursday and Friday of my New York session model. And so it will be playing sped up here the two days back to back. And I'm going to try to make this a prequel to my next podcast topic as well as a um sort of hindsight review of uh what I was looking at what I was anticipating happening and then what actually happened on Thursday and Friday this past week and so just looking at the screen now the left portion of it that's the uh 15 minute interval on nasdaq on the right side the hourly interval on the dollar index and so i'm looking for nasdaq to continue lower it's been a bearish week but i did have some sort of a reservation about taking sales where it was at i wanted to see it trade higher first and then i would get into my shorts and looking on the right side there so dollar is behaving handsomely fighting its way through that potential resistance that i'm thinking will turn into support so i had already had it identified as a pending bullish breaker if price was able to break through that range there and then any repricing back down into it should act as support that was what i was looking for to happen in a dollar and simultaneously i wanted to see a false run higher in nasdaq to a premium level to an area that may act as resistance and then i wanted to take sales from those areas to like i said see that continuation lower and so and now that the stage has been set for what's expected can branch off a little bit into the topic at hand which is belief and i do think that a prequel is appropriate because belief and the source of belief is a very dense and deep topic i could talk about it every day all day to be honest it's that deep and dense but i guess i want to start with what's just on my mind right now very simple i'm from chicago so if you're also from chicago or a fan of the uh national basketball association then you may be familiar with a guy named michael jordan and now i know michael jordan is considered by many to be the goat the greatest of all time to ever have played basketball I have lately been saying that there's only one goat and that only one goat is God, the greatest of all time for sure. Nothing can compare or even come close to comparing, in my opinion. But I uh, was thinking to myself earlier, imagine Michael Jordan didn't believe in himself and never pushed himself to become the Michael Jordan that we all know today. Now, there would have, of course, been other players that may be in that discussion then for the world's deemed greatest of all time basketball player, the best to ever do it. But we don't know with any certainty would it have been as magical as it's been with Michael Jordan? Or if it would be as one-sided, in a sense? There were, you know, big Kobe fans that would have compared Kobe to Jordan. And then lately it's been LeBron. So really only been two players that have come close to being considered to be better than Jordan. 
And so, like I said, maybe one of those would have been solidified as the greatest had Michael Jordan not believed in himself and continued to push to become who the world knows in the world of basketball, at least, as one of the best to ever do it. And so just a brief intermission on the topic, just looking at the charts really quick. So dollar pushed higher all the way up to the low end of the new week opening gap. And within the last like 15 minutes of the hourly candle, a uh, very strong rejection back lower. NASDAQ has reached into that first area that I was expecting some potential resistance not showing too much of a hard time getting through it and uh those are not good signs for me if i'm looking at that to be an area to act as resistance i don't want to see the entire range traded to and through like it was although just a wick pierced it and a body of the candle was respecting the midpoint of it um if it's that aggressive getting into there then i want to see it just as aggressive rejection out of there to be honest if i'm going to use that as an actual opportunity to take a sell so in my head here although i do have the risk reward tool up there is no entry on my end at this part well actually that's cap that's cap there was an entry on there's a competition account that i'm trading for the funded trader again not really trying to give out too much free promo but i do really appreciate all their efforts to keep the main thing the main thing which is trading so they offer on a monthly basis free completely free competitions for anyone who is within their community to participate in and the top three places as of late have been receiving cash prizes as well as some of the larger size account challenges that they have to offer and then for this month in particular they were doing a special like just give back in a sense to anybody that was able to end the month up at least 20 percent they're going to give a free twenty five thousand dollar challenge so that was really my goal for this month was to get the 20% done and the competition account with them with one of my goals. And uh, I was able to do that this past week, even with, like I said, I took that trade right there and it was a loss. And this next trade right here, I also took this trade in that uh, challenge account. And I've gone over numbers before. Each individual is going to have their own risk tolerance though. So I'm not trying to set any sort of cookie cutter approach to this just sharing from my experience that i prefer to do anywhere between a quarter of a percent to be honest up to one maybe one and a half percent per setup depending on how many setups i plan on taking throughout the week on a day like this where i had two back to back it made a lot of sense to do half a percent for one entry, half a percent for the other. So that total for the day would have just still been a typical 1% um, max loss day if I was to lose both setups. And so now we're seeing some sort of reaction here. Let me just briefly get back into the topic. And so the the main point that I want to make in regards to bringing michael jordan into the conversation is that i don't know the man haven't listened to too many of his interviews i did watch the last dance and i've heard other interviews where people would say things about him it seemed like he just was a a, a very ambitious driven hungry to win individual and there wasn't much that he was going to allow to get in his way and for whatever reason i know that there has to be a strong source of belief within him because to accomplish something like he was able to do 
in my opinion, it takes a, a, a strong amount of belief. There's no other way around it, in my opinion. Like, yes, maybe luck is a thing here and there. It's very, like, situational for me. I'm not a, a big believer in luck. I believe that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Because the timing is something that can't exactly be pinpointed. And so in a similar fashion, just tying that back into the markets, the timing of when something is going to happen is typically a hard part. So looking how the first trade setup pretty much immediately ran a stop loss. The second one hasn't necessarily been activated just yet. It did not trade up to the buy side yet, which would be the trigger to go short which is also inside of that 15 minute inefficiency up to the top left. So that's officially when the next setup is activated. And like I said, it hasn't quite yet. Over on the right side, so the dollar with that initial rejection from the new week open, it got below. Following hour was able to power through the low and actually close above the midpoint of it. And seeing the next hour candle, very volatile, printing a tail on the lower portion, the lower half of that Newark opening gap, but showing signs to me that there is going to be continuation higher, looking up and to the left above the Newark opening gap high, which is the higher purple line. That wick there is the high of that wick is a low of an hourly inefficiency. So I'm also keeping that in mind. That um, as they trade into there could also lend more um, trouble as far as struggling to continue higher. Now over on the left side on Nasdaq in the 15 minute interval. So I've noted that an efficiency on the 15 minute, which it has now at this point traded back below, but then immediately was able to get back above it and is now doing what it would be expected to do which is act as support also noticing that just above that orange line though and to the left there was another inefficiency on the 15 minute chart that i didn't annotate but i do see that okay it disrespected the first one to get to the lower one but now it's reclaiming that first one and is actually doing what it was expected to do initially which is act as support and so another nice leg higher as the dollar is rejecting from the high of the new week opening gap, right? Going right back through the middle there. And just pretty much on a smaller time frame, creating a range within that new week opening gap. So just watching here, as you can see, I've zoomed out a little bit. So that next area of buy side which is a stop loss to this trade idea is also inside of a, a 15 minute inefficiency. Some of it have been filled already. And so if you see to the, to the left of the screen, there is a green shaded area where it says buy side. That is the portion of the, the N15 inefficiency that hasn't been filled in yet. And so if it's going to fill in the rest of that, I'm anticipating for it also uh be potentially continuation higher because at that point it's already taken out three levels of uh premium and so there's no reason for me to try to force any sales when the market is showing clear signs that buy side is still on the agenda but once again looking at the dollar so it is now trying to fight to the to the outside portion of the new week opening gap on the bullish end of it and uh also seeing that that 15 minute inefficiency the pink shaded area has been filled in and another run lower is happening currently in nasdaq so that initial 15 minute inefficiency that i annotated is also once again going to be very important here how does it trade at that that range? Does it just smoke right through it? 
and seek lower prices or does it turn around and uh, continue higher and so that was actually the ending of the recording from thursday and so this has now jumped into friday's recording and i'm still looking for lower prices on the u.s stock indices and so um to i guess just kind of recap what happened on thursday so it did continue higher up into that next level of buy side right filling in the rest of that 15 minute inefficiency and then as it shifted over into the new day it just started to drift lower picked up some momentum in london session and left another 15 minute inefficiency that's where those green lines are above and the middle over there and so i'm expecting maybe a push up there for friday morning before continuation lower um but the problem is that the dollar has made a high and there's really no resistance levels for it to break at this point and so that would be something that would at least allow for the stock indices to continue higher or continue lower i mean if the dollar as it's moving higher even if it's not making a new high if it's taking out resistance levels um i've noticed and my own observations that that will be enough to allow for the stock indices to trade lower, even if the dollar isn't necessarily screaming higher and making new highs. But straight from the 830 opening, basically there's lots of volatility. And then um, seeing NASDAQ dip lower here, all of them did initially, but 30 and SPX then shifted bullish um and we're just showing a lot of indecision but it, it flashed on the screen briefly on a daily there was an inefficiency in both nasdaq and spx that i was looking forward to reach down into and so uh those were the targets they were both very close you could see briefly the one there on nasdaq 30 it was that daily swing low which it had reached already so as far as 30 was concerned um it had already done everything i needed it to do nasdaq here as you can see on that five minute interval looking to see if that would act as resistance but it was not able to price smoked right through that range and continued even higher so I'm thinking there's the last line of defense is going to be that 15 minute order block that I have annotated. And uh, anything above that, then I'm pretty much moved to the sidelines again. Now, there's no risk reward tool up just yet. I believe one does become applied eventually, but nothing I saw here was high enough probability for me to get in short. Okay, so there we go. Just for the sake of an example, I'm mentioning that I could have used that as an area to go short and was just, again, bringing up why losing is not the end of the world, why learning how to lose is something that I'm still working on, to be honest, but I've gotten much better at accepting it as a reality with this business because when I didn't accept it as reality, then I do a lot of stupid things like revenge trade, over trade, forced bad trades. Um, I mean, you name it, the list goes on and on. Typically, it would end up with pain for me in a sense of financial loss. And so that pain, I was able to learn from. And I'm grateful for it. Although at the time, it never felt good. All right. But so here i'm just speaking about the different risk reward ratios so it really was just speaking about how if i was to apply let's say again half percent risk on that first idea and was to lose that too so that'd be three lost trades in a row for a grand total for the past two days being thursday and friday a grand total of minus 1.5 percent and so I was mentioning how what I could do is to use half the risk on that next setup 
and how if that setup was to be profitable risking half that i did on the first one because of the higher risk reward ratio that would actually recover the losses from the first trade and a little bit um of the losses from the, the previous day's losses and so that's why just playing it as a numbers game not allowing fear to stop me from taking a setup as long as it follows all of my rules and that initial five minute setup technically followed my rules but the reason why i was not so comfortable with it was because of the lack of symmetry with the indices across the board so i'm watching how there's that hourly inefficiency real close that uh dow jones spx traded into and they were showing respect to it just meaning they were rejecting back lower out of it but the one on nasdaq was much higher and with the dollar not exactly screaming higher or having any resistance points to break it could consolidate within that range from the high to the low it just printed in the most recent leg down and so i'm really just not very certain that anything high probability is going to happen it's also friday and the market has been very bearish already for the week so it also doesn't leave much time for this play to happen and so it's really not a scenario in which i want to be forcing myself into any setups the one difference with friday from thursday is that because thursday i was anticipating the buy into the sale but not being able to time right be able to pinpoint what time that was going to happen once it closed for the day and it reopened and i noticed characteristics that i've seen in the past right so shout out to the experience i've put in but once i saw the characteristics that made me think that friday had pretty much made its high already at the open it, it allowed me to get in to sell positions pretty much at that high very near that high and so as it's down here it's already dropped through the asian session and through the london session and I'm just looking for that final push down into that daily inefficiency. So there's already profit open, already been partials taken as well off of all of those positions. And so I'm just holding on to the last piece to see if I'll be able to get my full target reached. So there was really no, as far as loss, technically from the day before, the two losses from the original setups from the day before had already been made up for in the transactions that I got in at the open. And I actually was able to take positions in NASDAQ, SPX, and US 30 because they were actually all trading in sync. There's not something that's going to happen often for me, but when I do see them all lined up and the dollar doing what I'd like to see it doing, then it's really just my, my green light to trade all three of them and just looking for low hanging fruit obvious targets and so that was what i did um like i said it was pretty much looking for a potential to re-enter into more shorts if it made sense but given the way that they had been behaving like i said whereas 30 had reached the objective already nasdaq and spx were not exactly showing uh, extreme weakness and I've seen things like this as well where the potential for an explosive rally to run a buy side that's been left behind as the market has been dropping all week um, it was a very real possibility and so a lot of factors ultimately that were being weighed in my mind and none of what was happening in price was giving me the confidence that that low was going to be taken for sure but also there was nothing to give me real confidence that the highs were going to be ran so in those situations something i consider low probability and there's really no sense in me applying risk to the markets and so as it finishes up this last minute or so here just want to tie up the uh, prequel conversation i was just mentioning about belief and so 
in closing, it's just one of those things that, like I said, I could talk about all day, every day, because we nobody asked for life. None of us signed an application or interview to be given a life. It just happened. And so nobody knows what the right answer is. Nobody knows what the right path is. And I know that for me, that I've tried to figure out what that right path was for myself. And I tend to try to bring people along with me because the path for myself I see is one that has an upward trajectory in life. And I don't want to be making strides moving higher in life and be doing so alone. I always wanted to bring some people with me. But I had to realize that our levels of belief and the source of them are going to be different. And so I want to do some more digging into that to see if that will allow me to better choose those to bring with me. But in closing, shout out to the believers and the dreamers. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.